were making octopus. It might look intimidating, but trust me, it is easy to make. Here I'm using a Mediterranean octopus, frozen, that has been thoroughly cleaned. If you can get your hand on a fresh octopus, it would be even better. If you are using a frozen octopus, make sure that you thaw the octopus thoroughly. Depending on the size of the octopus, this should take about two days in the refrigerator. Once you thaw the octopus thoroughly, it's time to give it a good wash, making sure that you clean the tentacles thoroughly. Take your time to ensure that each hole is free from any debris. On the rare occasion that you might see some dirt stuck in the tentacles, you can always use a toothpick to pick it out and clean the octopus. Also, don't forget to remove the beak in the octopus mouth located at the bottom. All you need to do is push it out from the sides and take it out. And now we are ready to start cooking the octopus. The octopus need to be boiled, so we will start by heating up some water. Don't do the mistake that I previously did by filling up the pot of water. Remember, you will be adding the octopus and the water will rise. So, make sure that you have plenty of room for the water to rise and boil. So, halfway through should be enough water for the octopus to boil. Don't forget to add some salt to the water. Once your water has started to boil, it's time to dip in the octopus. So what you need to do is hold the octopus by its head and then dip it in the hot water counting to 3 seconds and then getting it out for about 3 seconds and then go back again for another 3 seconds and then out again for another 3 seconds repeat the process for 3 times the fourth will be the final dip you drop the octopus in and that's how you cook a boiled octopus cover and let it cook on a low to medium heat for about an hour there is a myth that adding a cork to your octopus makes it more tender I struggled with that a lot thinking I should add it or I shouldn't add it I like to think of myself as a science believer and believer in facts so when it came to the decision of the cork I struggled should I add it should I not add it I wasn't too sure in the end myth has won and I decided to add the cork I'll leave that decision to you not only did I add one cork I actually added two after about an hour of cooking this is what the octopus will look like once the hour is finished it's time to turn off the heat and let it 
cool down for another hour or at least until the pot is not that warm and it's cold to the touch remember with all that residual heat your octopus will actually cook for two hours one hour on the heat and one hour cooling down start by cutting the tentacles eight of them starting from the top where the suctions start I am not a fan of the head, so I tend to cut it and discard it. Continue cutting the bottom pieces until you divide all eight tentacles. Once you have all your cut octopus, it's time to scrape off some skin using the back of your knife. There might be some excess skin or some jelly type material on the octopus tentacles, especially toward the end. You should discard the excess skin, just like that. Sometimes the skin might be tough to remove, so don't be afraid to use the knife and cut it off. You don't have to always use the back of the knife. The end result should be something like this and it's time to store your octopus. Keep it in a nice clean plate Obviously you can use the octopus in many recipes including pastas, salads and sandwiches. My favorite way of using the octopus is to use it grilled and adding it to the salads. If you have any questions or comment please feel free to leave them below and if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and sharing the video. Using cling film, close the plate and keep in the fridge for a maximum of three days. Thank you for watching till the end and I will see you on the next video.